Hi, good morning everyone. So today we're going to talk about cellulite. This is an issue which plagues <clears throat> a lot of women out there and statistics show that at least 90% of women in their lifetime will suffer from some form of cellulite. Now is this a disease? No. Is it a condition? Yes. There's this whole myth about fat people having cellulite. But let me tell you right now that even thin girls have cellulite. Actresses, models, even athletes. A lot of women athletes have cellulite. <clears throat> so it's not about how much of body fat you have. Yes, of course, if you have excessive body fat, that means you have excessive toxic overload in your body. And there is a fine connection between toxins and fat. But when you talk about cellulite, there's only one word that you should be focusing on, hormones. Cellulite is mainly a hormonal imbalance. And I'm going to explain it to you exactly how it is. But before we get any further, <clears throat> there is no cream out there that will take your cellulite away. Okay, you can spend a lot of money on different creams and all of that stuff. It may make your skin look a little better for a while, but it will not take away the root cause of cellulite, which is a hormonal imbalance and toxicity. There are loads of articles out there where, where, which say that toxins have nothing to do with cellulite, but today we're gonna, uh, we're, we're gonna understand exactly how toxins have almost everything to do with your hormonal imbalance and your cellulite. So none of those creams, none of those oils really work for you. Oils, of course, better than creams, much, you know, purer oils because creams come loaded with, you know, chemicals and a whole load of, you know, different things which are actually bad for your skin and bad for your immunity and your lymphatic system as well. So, uh, <clears throat> like I said, to repeat again, it is not about fat, it is about hormones. Now, when you have too much of estrogen, estrogen is a female hormone, and women have more estrogen than men, which is why we don't really see too many cellulite issues in a guy. In fact, you hardly see that. It's mainly in women because y'all have more estrogen. Now, estrogen is good for you. You require estrogen for your survival. You require estrogen to make a child. You require estrogen to balance your emotions, your hair, your skin, your thyroid, everything. <clears throat> the problem is when your body starts generating more estrogen than required. And today, all of us, men and women, we're living in a world where we're taking in more estrogen. They're called xenoestrogens. There are a lot of contamin contaminants in food that basically mimic estrogen in the body. And, and that has a direct correlation with cancer, most ovarian cancers and breast cancers, which are caused because of high estrogen in the body, you know? So having an overdose of estrogen in your body is one of the main reasons why you have cellulite. Now, it doesn't matter how much you work out, although exercise does play a big, big role in reducing or preventing your cellulite, it's more about how much estrogen you have. So how do we control the amount of estrogen that we have? Number one, the quality of food that we eat. The more junk and the more processed and the more contaminated food, the more food that has preservatives and colors and irritants like salt, the, the wrong salt, and too much of sugar basically increases your estrogen in your body. <clears throat> Plastic. The more we drink out of plastic water bottles, okay, the more estrogen, the more xenoestrogen we have in our body. So, you know, that's why I encourage people today to move back to copper, I, you know, copper vessels or copper uh, water storage bottles, glass, all of these things. Even BPA plastic, it may be a little bit better than plastic. It may not have all that bisphenol A coming into your water, but it still has a lot of xenoestrogens that get into your body. So the more plastic, the more cheap plastic that you keep touching, and if you look, you know, we're exposed to all forms of plastic all the time. That gets into your system and that raises your estrogen level. Women out there who are constantly on the pill, on oral contraceptives, I know there are many conditions that require you to be on the pill, but like I always say that if you're on the pill, you should be working with your doctor to get off it at some point. It's not a lifetime thing because you have more estrogen and then you have more problems and not just, not just cellulite. You know, being on the pill for a long time creates immense issues with the human body and your hormonal balance. Again, <clears throat> your lymphatic system. We spoke about the importance of keeping your lymphatic system, which is the body's sewage disposal system, clean. Not only for cellulite, but also to prevent and to heal cancers. So your lymphatic system has a job of removing all the toxins from your body. Now, if that's not functioning well, okay, 
toxins get trapped within the fat in your skin. And you know, cellulite has that orange peel effect, that cottage peel, that cottage cheese effect. It looks like fat. If you closely look at cellulite, it's like fats curved in and holding on to something. So that's trapped toxins in between fat. So if we help the body release these toxins by keeping our lymphatic system clean, we automatically help our body do what it does best, which means, you know, get rid of toxins and then automatically you can get rid of your cellulite. Uh, <clears throat> low water intake, and this is so important. Most people who have dealt with who have cellulite only by increasing their water intake because they all had low water intakes. Because, because again, what's the medium of your blood? Water. What's the medium of your lymph, which is what your lymphatic system contains to remove toxins out? Water. Okay, what's the constitution of your body? 80% water. Even a 1% drop of water in your body will lead to toxic storage in your body, which in turn would lead to cellulite. Collagen, which keeps the elasticity of your skin strong, which makes you look young, which makes your skin look tight and smooth and glowy. That collagen gets weakened when we have less water. So you have to improve the amount of water that you drink. Cosmetics. Most cosmetics out there, I know all the women out there are not going to take to this really well because your next question is then what do we use to look beautiful? Now that's a whole different subject. Do you really need cosmetics to make you look beautiful? But let's not talk about that right now. <clears throat> they say that an average Indian woman absorbs four to five kilos of chemicals from the cosmetics that they use annually. All of your cosmetics have chemicals in all of them. And if the job of a skin cream is to be absorbed into your skin. You're also absorbing not just the moisturizing benefits of your skin, of the uh, cream, also the chemicals and the color and the parabens and all the fragrance that's going into your skin as well. And that's toxic. Those are toxins, you know, to your body, to your immunity, to your blood. So my question for you is because I'm not going to give you this answer. Go back to, you know, many, 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 many years ago. <clears throat> when cosmetics didn't exist, what would your ancestors use? Because everyone's always tried to look beautiful. It's in our evolution, it's in our genes, it's in our DNA. So right, again, from coconut oil to almond oil to different pure uh, tree oils, all of that stuff, but the direct form of it. You know, didn't try to make it pretty and fragrant by adding all the chemical and the nonsense that they use today. So again, the more creams that you're applying on that cellulite area of yours, it's not really helping you. It's an inside out approach. You know, cellulite is expressing itself externally to you, visually to you, but the problem is inside. So we all, always, when we're, when we're looking to create, you know, solve a problem on the outside, the only way out is in. You basically start looking in to solve a problem that's expressing itself outside. So be aware of your cosmetic chemicals. There are a lot of companies that are making a lot of healthy and natural stuff, so you may want to explore that. Sitting in one place too long, and I'll tell you why, because... <clears throat> Poor cellulite is also caused due to poor blood circulation, okay? Now, blood has a function of carrying nutrients from the food that you eat and oxygen, most importantly, oxygen to all those billion cells across your body. So if you have poor hair, if you have falling hair, you have bad skin, before you even look at food, look at proper circulation. That's why we exercise, because exercise boosts circulation. That's why when you finish like a cardio workout or a good workout, why is your face glowing? You know, why do you have that glow? Why is your face red? Because that's circulation. Blood has been able to carry and deliver oxygen to every one of those billion cells in your body. So when you have poor circulation, and the biggest cause of that today is sitting in one place for too long, because you cut off circulation to the lower part of your body. So do not sit in one place for too long. Be active, move. Like I always say, it's not about your one hour workout. It's about how active you stay during the day. Most people working out one hour a day, they are only 4% more active than someone who's not working out at all if they're going to sit in one place for the rest of the day. So <clears throat> make sure that you're active throughout the day. Again, since we're on circulation, tight clothing. Be aware of tight clothing because that restricts your blood flow. And if your cells don't get the right blood flow, they can't flush out toxins. And that's how you are cellulite. That's how you get abnormal skin issues. So tight clothing, again, is a whole different topic. This is for men and for women. This whole concept of you know, wearing very tight underwear. You have, lymph you have your, uh, your lymph nodes in your groin area. And if you have a piece of tight underwear, you know, constricting blood flow and toxins, you have issues. So you know, we have to really revisit the way we w live, and women as well. This whole thing of wearing a bra, 
you know, tight bras, underwire bras? Where does it pass through? Un exactly under your arms where your lymph nodes are. And we see a direct correlation between breast cancer, especially lymphomas, and women wearing tight bras. And again, ask yourself, I mean, if God made a body that didn't require a bra at that particular point, if your body required it, it, uh, required it there would be a mechanism for it. But you see, again, the fear of all women is, oh, my breasts will sag. No one's really thought about that above your breasts, right in this area, you have a muscle that is meant to support the size of your breast. Now, yes, in today's world, you've got to wear a bra to be out and all of that stuff. And if you're doing intensive workouts, you do want to support your breast. But you have to understand when you're not wearing a bra, your breasts are not going to sag because you don't have the support of a bra. In fact, you allow that muscle, which is just above your breast, to get stronger. But when you're supporting it, you don't let that muscle get stronger. So I recommend that women do not sleep with bras. I recommend that men do not sleep with tight clothing because you want your circulation to be complete, especially when you're sleeping, when a massive process of detoxification happens. The best way to sleep is with minimum, bare minimum clothing as possible. So you allow exposure of your skin to oxygen and you allow no tightness to constrict your blood flow. Anyway, coming down to coffee, alcohol, and processed foods. That's the worst if you have cellulite. Because caffeine, again, overdose of caffeine. You're okay with your one or two cups of you know, coffee, so long as it's a simple coffee and not a frappuccino, which has all the other toxins and chemicals added to it. That's perfectly fine. But if you're one of those kind of people who does like three or four or five cups of coffee in a day, you're going to see cellulite. So you've got to balance that out. Alcohol, again, excessive drinking, excessive processed foods, again. We spoke about the pill. What are some of the best exercises? Again, any exercise that involves a squat, a lunge, yoga, pilates, planks. These are fantastic exercises for cellulite. Dry brushing. Get a brush which has natural bristles and brush the area that you have cellulite. This improves circulation in that area and actually helps you drain out toxins. So, you know, some people go for lymphatic massages, that's great, but you can take a dry brush and start stroking the area that has cellulite in an upward motion, which means each stroke is in the direction of your heart, an upward stroke direction. So massages definitely help and detox baths. So if you have a bathtub or whatever it is, you know, you put half a pound of Epsom salts in your bathtub and you soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. It is highly detoxifying for the human body for cellulite and for toxins. Just make sure you drink a lot of water because you'll sweat out a lot and you need to stay hydrated. Even better than your detox bath is something natural that, you know, God's given us, the sea. Soak yourself in sea water. Whenever you're at a beach, you know, immer immerse yourself. The sea water has therapeutic you know, healing powers, right? From people who have back pains, to knee pains, to arthritis. I can promise you they feel much, much better when they do regular sea baths. So make sure your next holiday is at a sea destination if you don't live next to a sea. Or you can simply fill up a bucket or a bathtub or whatever and soak in Epsom salts. Do this once a week. You know, it takes a lot of stress of the body and a lot, a lot of toxins off your body. So the whole thing again is coming down to detoxification again, you know, because you need to understand how a cell works. <clears throat> Everything involves a cell in your body. You were born from a cell. So your cell needs to protect what it has in, which is the nuclei, your DNA, your genes. So your cell will do anything it can to protect what it has inside. So most cells, in fact, every cell is covered with a thin permeable layer of fat to protect the inside of the cell. This is normal. All of us have it. Now, the more toxic overload we have, toxins are a threat to the nucleus of your cell. So to protect your cell, your cell starts producing more and more fat, a thicker layer of fat around that initially thin permeable layer of fat to protect itself. So the more toxins you have, that fat gets larger and larger, your cells get larger and larger, and that's how we get fatter and fatter. You go for a detox program, and why do you lose weight so rapidly? Yes, you lost a lot of water, but you've taken toxins out of your body so your cells can reduce to their original size. That is the importance of detoxification. So, yeah, you can make your notes. That's what cellulite's all about. So it's not about going and punishing yourself in the gym because, again, we spoke about over-exercising yesterday. Over-exercising increases your estrogen. And now we know what cellulite is all about. It's about hormonal imbalance and excess estrogen in the human body. Have a good day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.